Hello, my name is Cesar Saavedra. I'm a technical marketing manager at GitLab. In this segment, I'm going to cover a capability introduced in GitLab 13.5 called View Cluster Cost Management Data in GitLab. So the Z capability allows you to see an overview of your cluster costs and resource usage in the GitLab user interface. Uh, our integration builds on top of the KubeCost cost model open source project and gives you uh, flexible insights into various levels uh, of your clusters. Uh, before this capability, many users had to create their own scripts to better understand their cluster costs. Why does it matter? For customers and prospects, uh, now as they're a part of their cluster cost management, uh, customers can now get insights into their cluster resource uh, usage. They can also identify unusual high peaks uh, in, in cost. Uh, they can save money by identifying idle clusters and either decommissioning them or consolidating workloads into underutilized clusters. And finally, this insight can help them plan and forecast for future quarters and years uh, cloud consumption budgets. Here are some resources to learn more about this new capability. There's the documentation link. There's also a link to the issue. Uh, there's a link to the open source KubeCost uh, cost model project. There's also a link to our ad adaptation of that KubeCost uh, cost model project. And a link to examples of cost queries that you can use uh, when querying the data uh, related to the cost, uh, cloud cost. Uh, things to follow, check out our cluster cost optimization category uh, uh, direction page. The link is right there. And other notes, uh, you, uh, in order to be able to use this capability, you need to be a maintainer of the group or project. And also you need to have uh, organization level billing permissions in your cloud provider account, whether using uh, GCP or um, Amazon or Azure. Okay, now let's move on to the demo. I have created a group called KubeCost, and I'm gonna go ahead and create two projects inside of that group. The first one is called KubeCost Cost Model. I'm gonna make it public. I'm gonna create it. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to clone the uh, our adaptation of the KubeCost uh, Cost Model open source project onto my local directory so that I can then uh, import it into the project, the empty project that I just created. I'm gonna go into the uh, clone project. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the .git directory and I'm gonna go ahead and copy these instructions to push an existing folder into this project that I just created. Very good, so once I've pushed uh, that project, uh, I refresh the page and you can see the contents of the project now have been uploaded to GitLab. I'm gonna go back to the group. I have the populated project already there, cube cost, cost model. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a group level uh, Kubernetes uh, GKE cluster. I'm going to give it the name C Saavedra dash cube cost, provide the project, the zone and the number of nodes. Um, I'm going to change the zone to US East 1D and I'm going to leave three number of nodes and the machine type is going to be N1 standard 2. Actually, no, I'm going to change that to E2 standard two. I'm gonna go ahead and create the cl cluster. And once it's created, I'm gonna go ahead and start, um, install some applications. There it is, the cluster's uh, started on GKE. And I'm gonna start, uh, install, I'm sorry, uh, Ingress, Assert Manager, and Prometheus. Prometheus is, uh, an open source monitoring system that is, uh, we're gonna be leveraging it uh, for this KubeCost uh, integration. Very good, now they are all installed. Next, I'm going to make sure that I am connected to the uh, right context uh, and the cluster. So I get the credentials and make sure that the context is right. 
I'm going to create a namespace called cost model in my GKE. And then I'm going to uh, run a, a kubectl uh, command uh, using the uh, YAML files in that Kubernetes subdirectory, which will um, basically instantiate the pod in the running clusters right there, cost model. And that's the name of the pod. And it's up and running already. And also Prometheus is up and running on GKE. I'm going to go ahead now and create a second uh, project under this group cube cost. And I'm going to uh, call it uh, Spring Java. Make sure it's public. It's going to be an empty project. Uh, like before, uh, I already have this project in my local directory. And I'm going to be pushing it to this empty project I just created in, uh, in GitLab. So I'm going to change directory to that uh, project on my local drive. I'm going to make sure that all the files are there. And then I'm going to copy and paste the commands uh, to push the existing folder into this empty project. Let's refresh the screen, and now we should see that this project is no longer empty. There you go. So that's the Java sample sample project that uh, we're going to be deploying to GKE. So we're going to turn on Auto DevOps. Let's just uh, click on the continuous deployment to production. And this will start a pipeline that will compile, that will build, uh, run a bunch of tests, and deploy the application to production. Very good. So now that the pipeline is finished, let's go to operations metrics. And um, we want to open now the dashboard for the uh, cube cost, which is default cost YAML. And there you go. This is the uh, chart showing us or a graph showing us the amount of uh, the monthly note costs for GKE in this case. And as you can see, we made a, we pushed something to production where you see that rocket. We applied a change to that environment. And we can change uh, the range to 30 minutes if you want. And that also gives you the monthly cost, uh, a minimum, a maximum, and an average. Just to make sure, let's uh, open the running environment, the application, I'm sorry, and uh, it's up and running. And this is the YAML for the dashboard that you just saw for cube cost. So that's all. Uh, I had for this segment. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.